The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too Everybody, welcome to my brother, my brother, me and advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. And I'm the mystical, magical illusionist entertainer, <laughs> David Blaine. David, yeah. so happy to have you here. Wow, what an honor. Sorry, I, I got I got delayed by some crosswinds over Milwaukee. Yeah. And so it delayed me coming into the studio today. Just a few days after your dramatic ascent holding a <laughs> Like holding a, a lot of balloons, balloons. A yeah. great deal up, of upping yourself balloons. is what the kids call it. Yeah, I did an up, and it uh, was an ex- exhilarating journey that brought the country together, and it was an illusion. And also, I liked doing it a lot, and I had a lot of fun doing it. So that's the only means of conveyance you're using. So now I do it all the time because when you get on an airplane, uh huh. They aren't doing a great job of the social distancing. Have you guys heard about this? No oh, one was yeah. a social. You might have been, David. The mo you you got up to twenty four thousand nine hundred feet. Yeah. Um. Y- it you must have been the most. You might have been the most socially distanced person on the planet. Well, I was until one of my balloons popped and it released oh. the stinky breath of a sick man. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> The balloons were all blown up by a, lar- a big man with powerful breath, and it's. I found out later he was sick with it. So I don't know. It was again the crosswinds may have diluted it somewhat. But that path- may have that may have been Smilex gas. You know how the Joker do. Yeah, the Joker's always on my nuts. Can I? Can I give so, you? Uh, I I just want to say thank you, uh, Mr. Blaine, um, yes. because I, for. It is amazing how your balloon trip captivated the hearts and minds of everyone. And for yeah. for days now, it's all anyone yeah, has been talking all about across all social. It's literally the only thing being discussed. It is, I think, the first thing that has distracted everyone from everything. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. I actually, I as... As interested as I'm here to hear him to hear about David's experience with the yeah. balloon, I'd like to talk about my experience, which is I saw on Twitter about a half hour after it ended mm. that it had happened. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh man, I didn't fucking hear about that. He did what? I like to pretend that David Blaine was like, if I could tell him that personally, <laughs> like, I know you went up in the air. With balloons you're holding, yeah, but sure. I didn't find out about it till later, and I couldn't be bothered. David, and then, David, by the way, when I did watch it, yeah. I did skip around quite a bit. That's your okay. journey and your your ascension and decline, even your falling, even your falling through the fucking air. I was like, and took it. Took David, can I? May I ask? Because it kind of you sure aren't really giving me room to speak about my incredible sky journey. I'm sure no, because I do want to hear about it. I do, David. 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 I do, but to to Justin point mm-hmm. it kind of seems to me like maybe that unlike you know where you uh sat in a big fishbowl for a long time or you claim to be frozen in ice even though our daddy did that and it, you, you oh, I don't wait, know. you're you're clint's kids yeah 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 <laughs> the, the creator of the frozen and ice gag um it kind of seems like this one wasn't like a a publicity thing so much as it was just something you were going to do on your own and somebody noticed and pointed a camera at you. It didn't seem like it was advertised in any way beforehand. Is that true? No, but we did a sort of street team advertisement, but with Mm. balloon, we tied it like with the URL, we put it on some paper and we tied it to balloons. But wouldn't you know it, the Dagnab things dang did flew up into the sky Mm. so no one could see him. Um, David, I'd like to talk about one feature of your stunt 
that I thought was so captivating. Good. Um, you're, I believe, uh, there's a young woman there who I believe, uh, was your daughter. I, mm. I don't know for Me sure. Either. I mean, either. Uh, but she attached the final balloon that began your ascent into the sky. Put me now, over. Yeah, put you over. That was so lovely. I wanted to know, did you consider the fact that if something did go terribly wrong, she would have like YouTube live streamed evidence that she could re revisit for the rest of her existence of that time she killed her dad mm -hmm. with a balloon. Did yeah, you think about that outcome? Part of, it's part of the illusion, isn't it? Well, there's no but, illusion. No, whoa, whoa, you're what's very the, clear about this. That was you in the balloons, right? Unless, unless that was the trick. That was you in the balloons, right? I never give it away my secrets, but it okay, was a, I had an invisible. It was a very big ladder. There were some oh, people. Oh, wait, hold on, Justin. I want to okay. hear more about this giant invisible ladder technology. Okay, it was big. It was a big ladder, ten thousand foot ladder. I didn't even get up the whole dang thing. Um. In these times when things are changing so much, I would like to repeat a little bit of consistency in the world. I showed your stunt to uh, my wife, mm -hmm. uh, who reacted the way she has reacted to all of your stunts for the past decade. She watched in silence and then said, that fucking idiot. Oh. <laughs> Every How's single time, David. That, uh, that hurts my feelings, or does it? Huh. <laughs> what did Leo think of this? Leo loved it. I'm not sure who you're referring DiCaprio, to. DiCaprio, Leo DiCaprio, your friend Leo DiCaprio. You're oh. friends with a lot of celebs. Yeah, yeah, he liked it one time. I, I, uh, he had a big, he had a watch, and I made it not there anymore. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, it was pretty badass. And then now, I what did Edward Norton think? And then I threw up a frog, but that was unrelated. Tell me about the time you set Edward Norton's shoes on fire yeah, and I then wanna... spit water on them so hard that they went out. Yes, please. Well, it was his. It was his fucking birthday. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I took him out to dinner at a Ruth's Chris, and they were doing it hibachi style. <laughs> okay. Yeah, go on. This is a more thorough recount. <laughs> <laughs> that, I, 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 I'm not gonna say I, I'm not gonna try to jump to conclusions here, but Chekhov's gun, you have introduced a hibachi and his shoes are on fire. And I'm having a hard time not connecting the yeah. two. Well, that's that may it. be I a faint you. though, it may be a red herring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you looking over there at the hibachi table, and then when it happens, your watch is not fucking there anymore. Whoa, you stole my watch. Yep, and then and you replaced it with Edward Norton's shoes. Yep, and then what's that in my mouth? It's another frog. Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> now, so how did the shoes come to ignite? I'm not going to give you all my secrets, but I- Was that the trick that you made his shoes flammable? Yeah. I, made, I took it, changed the stuff that it's made out of into a sort of oh. polyester of my own design. I have my own shoe line of extremely burnable shoes dropping this summer. Oh, wait, summer's over. I forgot. Man. I guess I just thought that the trick was how much water you regurgitated upon his shoes. No. Hey, you want to see me float? Woo. Yep. Whoa. Hi, okay, yeah, I'm going to float off. But anyway, yeah, I got lunch plans with f fucking Balloon Boy. <laughs> <laughs> me and Balloon Boy are going to hit up Bruce Chris, and you know what he's in for. <laughs> say, say goodbye to your kids, Balloon Boy. I'm cooking them up hibachi style. <laughs> oh, man. What a big get. I mean, I had so many questions to ask him that I forgot. Yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> what did you mean? <laughs> hey, sorry, David. Just real attention. Quick. How did you pl how did you put my playing card inside the bottle? Oh, it was uh, it, the bottle isn't real. Ah, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I see that. Hey guys, now. Uh, David just floated out the window in his big balloons. Um, Griffin, are you ready to start my brother, my brother, and me? Yeah, let's do it. All right, just press record, everybody. Okay. And... <laughs> So this is a my show. So let's obviously, say, let's, obviously, so let's help people. I live in an apartment building, and today the windows are being washed. Since I am working from home in a tiny apartment, my desk is six inches away from the window, and a window washing guy just dropped onto v into view. We acknowledged each other, and I thanked him. And now I'm sitting here pretending to work, staring at my computer screen while this while this gentleman is literally six inches from me, staring back at me while doing his job. 
I have a full cup of coffee and toast already on my desk, so there's no excuse to get up and put around the kitchen. The anxiety I currently feel is unlike anything I've ever felt. How do I most effectively cover the fact or convey the fact that I'm definitely working and not just trying to avoid eye contact with him? That's from working in Washington. My, I think hmm. my favorite part of this question is the the uh, conceit, the belief that if you got up to go to the kitchen, the window washer would be like, where are you going? You got a full cup of yeah. coffee. Where are you, you going? Know, is this, this about is, me? This is one of many questions, and it's a sort of, it's a genre of question that we get from our listeners, uh, who I adore, because we are so very alike, us and our listeners, where you are assuming that this person's sort of whole mindset is about you in this moment because mm-hmm. that's what anxiety does to you when really you can get up and they're not going to they're not going to yeah. pay you they're not going to pay you any mind they're listening to the radio they're or focusing you know, on not falling to their death which is what i would be doing in their position yeah they're on the they're on the clock and they're dialed in they're probably not concerned with you or what you're doing or anything about you because the, guess what they're going to go by a bunch of windows with a bunch of people working in them if they gave a shit about every single person in every single window it would take up a lot of sort of emotional lift now okay here's what i will say though griffin yeah Speaking of putting ourselves in in place of our listeners, if I was the window washer, I would, upon looking at every window, think, what are they doing? I think that, like, that is... of course you would. No, like, Mm. obviously you would, because... Every time? Every time? This is what I wanted to say. This is what I wanted to say. These people are doing an incredibly dangerous job. Are are the fine people of the window washing industry? That's a dangerous gig. I'm thinking they probably have some safety protocols in place, but by and large, it's it's more dangerous than a bunch a of gig. it's just a bunch of balloons. Letting the and it's boring. You know, it's probably a lot of it times. Once you get into the rhythm, it's probably boring. You owe them. They have the right. <laughs> what I'm saying is, we owe them a little bit of entertainment, a little show. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I think to, just to help them pass the time on the the boring, dangerous thing that they are doing for our our edification. <laughs> Is this that futile? This futile act that will be undone by entropy and the ravages of time in uh, and birds. a matter of days. Um, and birds. Thank you, Travis. Uh, and bugs. Just let them have a look. See <laughs> what you're doing. <laughs> give them a show. A just give them a show. Don't let them know you're there though. Cause that's not their thing. No, but I do. I, it has just now occurred to me. That this is probably why Hitchcock called his movie rear window instead of just window, because it would be a way different experience in rear window. If it was a cleaner six inches away, just like, Hey, did you kill somebody? Hey, hey. I saw that mister. I'm right. I am right, right here. here. You can pretend I don't exist like that guy in Washington that one time. But I'm right here, and I'm pretty sure you killed your wife and maybe a dog in a bucket. It's been a while since Travis has seen a rear window. Why are you telling me about when Travis saw a rear window? Well, I'm just trying to share a brief moment of humanity with you to bring us closer together. Oh, you went in the kitchen, okay? Bye. What do you do with all those creepy sneakers that you... That you find when you're going down the windows. This is like, the code. This is the sacred code. Oh. Yeah, the sacred code of the, the window washer is that you may watch all the secrets, and but you must lock them in an amulet that yeah. you keep uh, around your neck. That what? powers you. Yeah, you whisper the secrets into the amulet, and that's what keeps your floating uh, hover platform aloft. Correct. The power of secrets. Oh, it's mm-hmm. not cables like in movies. No. No, no, no. No, no, no. Those are just there to keep up appearances, but they That's do an nothing. illusion created by how, the amulet. How come every time someone gets on one of those in movies and TVs, it always falls? Always yeah. falls. We we'll get on one in a movie. Yeah. Like I I I think the rate of incident in which the window washer platform does fall would have to be exceptionally low, or else mm-hmm. We, I, I would assume we just leave these bad boys dirty. Do you think when window washers like see that move, they're like, "What? No, no, come on, that's come not. Come on, get that's his restraints not. on. Come on, that's not how it works. What? Are you, it's got redundancies. Are you kidding me? What I is have this? Have to assume it has redundancies. Uh, can I do a Yahoo? I would no. like to see. I would like oh. to see a scene in a movie where somebody gets onto the platform and everything. It's like tense music, but then it's just like a half hour scene of them figuring out how the controls work and then turning it on and then lowering themselves like a hundred floors and then getting off at the bottom. And then like, I don't know, getting in a cab, you know? 
I'd like to see a scene where the Green Goblin knocks a Window Watcher's platform down and Spider-Man's like, oh, fuck, I got to get over there. And he swings over there and the Window Watcher's like, I had proper safety protocols. Yeah, in place. I mean, Spider-Man, I'm, there's I'm, redundancies. I'm fine. There's redundancies, of course. Uh, if you're a Window Watcher uh, listening to podcasts, please uh, get at us and let us know, I guess, everything that's going on over there. Yeah, give <laughs> us a play-by-play of what you see. Yeah, and describe your amulet in detail. Yeah, be <laughs> honest, we'll know. <laughs> we'll know. Uh, here's a Yahoo that was sent in by Sean. Thanks, Sean. Uh, it's by Yahoo Answers user Nope, who has a he, he's got a question here that is that has been on the tip of my tongue, and Sean uh, Nope has managed to put it into words in a way I never have. Uh, thank you, Nope, for your bravery. Nope asks, why hasn't there ever been a wizard wrestler? Huh? huh. Like in like in WWE. The wizard wrestler would have special powers like controlling other wrestlers via telekinesis. He'd definitely be jacked and wear a speedo, but he'd also have a big white beard and a wizard hat. I did not read that part before. I, <laughs> I did not vet that part correctly. I imagined a, more of a sort of Gandalfian yeah, vibe. Absolutely. You, you um, were thinking more of a svelte, not so much beefcake, but perhaps... Um, you know, like a a, a, a svelte jaguar esque. You know, well, I was more thinking about the 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 hemp and garments of a Christopher Lee, but not oh, necessarily a speedo with rippling muscles. But I guess wizards come in all sh- shapes and sizes. Yeah, and it is interesting to me, Griffin, around. that you assume that Gandalf underneath that robe isn't rippling with muscles. Isn't like huge. Yeah, you maybe. don't know that. Get um, off the shredded. I wrestling has some. It requires remarkable athleticism, and uh-huh. there is uh, obviously an inherent risk to every bout that happens in that beautiful that beautiful cage. Um, but also, sometimes they do a make believe. Yeah, that's and interesting. I know that there's been a wrestler who would take off a sock and make you smell it so bad that you fall asleep. <laughs> uh-huh. So I don't see why there can't be a wrestler who takes you over with his psychic powers. Sure. Would that be that- the problem though? Is that is that wrestling is already has a sort of we know this. This is not. Uh, there's a tenuous relationship to reality in wrestling, and they're constantly playing. With that, in a, in a word that I will not attempt to pronounce because I've been saying it for 10 years and I've never managed to get it right. But it's Kayfabe? The, thank you. Sure, Travis had it this time, tweeted him. Uh, and But I feel like introducing, it would be straining the bounds of believability if you did just have one wrestler show up and this one does have well magical powers. It seems to me like people are okay with um someone maybe being an undertaker and maybe being dead in some way and like having a manager who may or may not be dead. That was an act. That I think fake. that if you're going to have a magician character, it can the premise can't be I always loved wizards growing up and so I've styled myself as a wizard. It must be I am a wizard <laughs> uh-huh. who will win the fight with magic. I find it hard to believe that there has not been a wrestler who could perhaps mesmerize or hypnotize up to well, this Well, okay, okay. I mean, we we do have something like that now. There is there is uh, there is someone who uses what I will refer to as just sort of swamp magic to mm-hmm. uh, to get, cast people into sort of uh, illusory hellscapes. That feels real. Yeah. And, and, that doesn't bother me. So we got that, right? Why not Wizard? In the last WrestleMania, the fucking Undertaker killed AJ Styles. <laughs> guys, guys, he's a performer. He's an entertainer. Alan Jones fucking killed, ki- killed him and <laughs> buried his dead ass six feet under the loam. Dust to yeah. dust, baby. This dude's dead as disco, and then he's back the next week. So why not Wizards, I guess? What happened I, when he came back? Hold on, I am curious, Griffin. When he came back, was there any, like, zombie theme? Or, like, no, was it- No, he, he was just kind of back, and he was pretty peeved at The Undertaker. Yeah. But they only do The Undertaker at WrestleMania, so he kind of let bygones be bygones for <laughs> another got, year, at he least. He got over it. <laughs> He got, he got over it. Maybe next WrestleMania, he'll show up at the Undertaker fight and be like, I did not appreciate you <laughs> killing my ass dead and putting me in the ground like a dead body does. I think if you were going to have a wizard character, 
Yeah. They would have to only be able to access their powers once X had been accomplished. They could not walk right out the gate and blast mm. you with a fireball or lightning or whatever. It would have to be like they got a power up via getting punched enough, right? Or something. Maybe it's rage fueled magic. Um, or it's the cheers of the crowd, perhaps. Yeah. I mean, we got Finn Balor who turns into the beast when he gets psyched up. There's a lot of people who transform into bestial characters. So why not a fucking wizard, please? Yes. Give me I, it's such a shame <clears throat> that live audiences aren't permitted at wrestling events now because I would love to start seeing the crowd filled with why not a wizard signs. Yeah. Maybe once the things that, but I feel like the heat of this is going to be gone by the time. We wrap up the COVID stuff. Could it be a social co- campaign? Hashtag hmm. why not a wizard? Tweet tweet events and everybody. Well, you don't have to no, you don't have to tweet at anybody. You can just tweet simply hashtag why not a wizard. How that that's so that there is no wrestling connection to that. Oh, you don't think that's obvious? I didn't think it needed to be stated. I think that when someone se- sees that, they will immediately think of the void in wrestling of being like, Yeah, you're right. Why not a wizard? Bray Wyatt has swamp magic and he transforms into a beast. Well, he took both. He can't do that. That's what I'm saying. Why there can there should be even if somebody's already got a thing. Why not well, a wizard? Why not wizard Roman Reigns? Some people are still not over. Just fucking give him to telekinesis. Griffin, it's there's so gotta be easy. Some sort of baby face um person like one of the wrestlers that doesn't have a cool name. They just are their regular name. Uh huh. And we're like John can, Cena. Like John Cena, who could come back as the wizard. Maybe a character. Oh, oh, maybe that's the thing is uh, Roman Reigns, Griffin. I, you mentioned people. He was supposed to be a hero and then people didn't like him. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that was that was ancient history, but still, yes, he is not over in some people's Perhaps he mind. discovers his powers. They manifest one day oh, while saving someone. Um, and this is, it's not like, it's not retcon. This is yeah. a new development of like, yes, and also, sure. uh, I saw a child about to be hit by a car and I magic that car away. Okay. So and that's he how I found a, my powers. He has this fantastical move where he cocks his arm like it's a shotgun and he jumps, uh-huh. he does jump in the air and he punches somebody with this arm that I guess he has prepared in some way he has loaded, loaded it in some way yeah. so what if the next time he does it he just cocks it and like a fucking lightning bolt comes out and he's there like you go. whoa what the fuck did you guys see that and then we would do cussing yeah. in the in the wwe again which would be cool if the one of the cool things about having a wizard is that you could he's unbeatable right because of magic but you could f- like there's an object outside of the ring in our world where his power is contained. Uh huh. Because oh. I think one of the things about wrestling that sucks is that it's always in that the um the 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 you know the square. And I feel like if they had an opportunity to do some storylines that was just the Undertaker rampaging through Detroit looking for the secret dagger of we'll get it in post. <laughs> yeah, we'll fi- we'll figure you know. it out. <laughs> Well, you know, yeah. Oh man, that would be so good because I would love to see Vince do, like taking part in it. Like, did you find the dagger? Like, doing right, his yeah. very best acting. I we have to, to stab into, the heart. You need to go into the ancient vault of Rylech. I and think it, what I've stopped. I think at some point I've stopped describing wrestling and started describing shows. Yeah, yeah. but it would be cool if it was like shows. What you if there was a like, companion television show to okay. wrestling? Where they were going on adventures, and maybe <laughs> I they were, were going to teams- say if there was a companion character to the Undertaker. Like, I know I don't have wrestling powers, but I'm here to provide some levity. My I- name is <laughs> Dirk Taker. I'm your son. <laughs> I'm your son, and I will find the dagger and I will stop the magic man. Griffin, are there any wrestlers? I turned 17, Dad. I got my wrestling powers. I'm proud of you, Dirk. <laughs> I'm proud, I'm proud, proud Dirk. of you, Dirk Taker. Dad, I'm going to be a nice Dirk- guy who brings life. What? You've he's disappointed me his, again, Dirk. He's making his SmackDown debut, son of the Undertaker. Everybody, here comes Dirk Taker. Oh, he's got a dagger. You can't. <laughs> he took bud. that, Dirk. Hey, no, bud. he's got my dagger. Oh, the wizard seems pretty worried about this. <laughs> For the first time, the wizard is worried. My power has been compromised. <laughs> oh, and it's Looks- the wizard's son, Tom. 
Hi, like I'm Tom. Dirt. I don't wrestle. I guess oh, no. Dirk Taker is swiping his knife at the... We gotta call this, guys. The wi- <laughs> oh, no, the wizard. His skin is melting, and the roaches that were ambulating his body have just started to disintegrate. Uh, that's right. He was just uh, an ambulating uh, skin shield for a bunch of living roaches. We'll have to see how this affects the rankings or whatever. I'm going to run WWE into the ground just from like budgets on the effects we're going (laughs) to need for this show. (laughs) I would want it to be some ratty ass men in black (laughs) one era like PlayStation (laughs) one low poly just sort of dissolving man (laughs) effect. That would be so fucking good. God, we should write wrestling. Uh, God, they should let us do wrestling. Are there any wrestlers who their whole gimmick, like their whole thing is that they always seem surprised to be in a wrestling match. Like maybe they were just like a fan who got up to go to the bathroom or like buy a program or whatever. And then they're just like, wait, I'm a what? Huh? Oh, what? Okay, Travis, this is perfect. The character's name is Phil Spigot, and he doesn't want to wrestle. Yeah. And what it happens is the wrestlers have to go and find him and start the wrestling against his will. And he's just like in line for the men's room. (laughs) Right, he doesn't know the wrestling is about to... That's the problem, is that all these wrestlers are waiting until the match starts. If you want to get serious about this, you need to start finding these people in their daily lives. Yeah. I'm pretty sure... Hey, where's Ron- Phil? I, I don't think he came to the wrestling match. I'm going to his house. I'm going to find sh- him. I think Braun Strowman was just, like, getting some pretzels at SmackDown. And they were like, what do you do, man? Get up there. <laughs> <laughs> look at your, dude, look at your fucking body. Get up there. <laughs> look at your incredible wrestler's body. Holy no, I, shit. I'm, I'm an accountant. Yeah, no accounting for how big and beefy you are. Get up there. Uh, I'm an actually I'm an undertaker. Yeah, we get it. Yeah, yeah no, I right. I mean, I'm I'm like a mortician. Well, that's taken. So you got to pick something else. You got to pick something else. But I am an undertaker. That's taken. It's taken. Can you be a wizard? I don't have powers. Damn it. Fuck, that would be great if like a uh, like a big a big wrestler got to be the wizard. Yeah, just like a big beefo. If, if, if Brock Lesnar shows up to the next WrestleMania, they're like, "Oh, baby, here we go, <laughs> Suplex City," and he's like, "No, I don't do that anymore." <laughs> Check out my beard. <laughs> My huge, bushy, vulnerable beard. He reaches into his fucking knife tattoo on his stomach and pulls out the actual dagger. (laughs) He's opened a portal to hell. Whoa. Let me guess, you're going to suplex the other guy. I don't do that anymore. I don't suplex anymore. I use my mind now. I control time with the amulet around my neck, and I have a cape that moves on its own. Why would the wizard go into the ring? That's the question for me. Yes. Yeah. If the wizard has these incredible powers, what storyline reason is there for... He could be just waiting for the wrestler to wrestle somebody else, saying, eating some nachos in 37G, yeah. and then just blaze them, right? Well, the other the other wrestler said something mean about his girl. Yeah. And so he, wanted, he had to get... Maybe he smooched... His mama or something. I don't know. Okay. I haven't watched wrestling since like 1998. That's bad. Let me give you this. His spells are powered by punches. And in That's order what to I get said earlier. One spell. Well, no, he's building spell energy. Uh-huh. Okay. So he has to slap the person. You know, sometimes they slap their belly. Yeah. Don't yeah. you love that? Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> it seems friendly. It's, it's fun. Now, is it by your- punching others or getting punched, Justin? It's not Try even what? punching, Travis. It's an open hand belly slap. Yeah, it's an open hand belly slap. I'm just saying that maybe the wizard's powers are powered by being punched by someone else. Okay. So they have to get punched to power up their powers. That's huge. That's cool, too. That. Uh, we cool. should write wrestling. Get at us, whoever. I'm just saying, wrestling, if you want us to write you, uh, get at us. Get at us. Maybe it has to happen in a geometric shape, and they're too lazy to make their own. Mm. So they just use the ring to do it. What if I'm, the three of us filmed a sort of indie demo tape of us wrestling using the, the, this great fiction, but we did it in the front yard? Oh, where hey. everyone could see it, and then that way people wouldn't think that like something unsavory is happening. It's in the front. This is fr- this is three. This is three boys front yard wrestling yes. with with supernatural elements. I was going to suggest that perhaps we were all three wizards. And then I thought, what if that became the thing? Every wrestler is still themselves, oh, but fuck. also 
everyone has powers now. We are basically, this is Mortal Kombat level. Oh yeah, that guy, he studied, you know, karate uh, until he became a master and also can mm-hmm. turn into a dragon. They are separate, unrelated, but two things that he can do. He is a very good fighter and also can shoot ice out of his hands. I mean, again, you're just kind of making show now. Yeah, you're just kind of making Mortal Kombat yeah, this, this is just the TV a show. But also, um, there's uh, a real human element to it. Okay, <laughs> it's too late. You you fucked up the pitch. Fuck. No Damn one's gonna it. buy this. It's you know we're uh, we're gonna have to fall back on our old uh, funding model, uh, advertising. Oh, okay. Podcast. I thought you were gonna say selling plasma. No, I thought we were gonna we'll do the max it. fun drive again, but I don't think we're allowed to do that. No. no. Jesse said no. Okay, let's go. You know what I love? What do you, what? Listening to things. And so that is why I enjoy Audible. They got audiobooks and so much more. They got original podcasts. They have uh, like interviews with people. They got all kinds of cool stuff on there. Um, I I recommended this uh, to, I think I recommended it to Justin, and then we passed that on to Dad, and I've passed it to all my friends. Audiobook that I thoroughly enjoyed, The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. Oh my God, it's the best. It's, oh. If you love like mystery novels uh, and you want to hear one like you've never heard before, The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle is absolutely incredible and will blow you away. Okay. I, yeah. You haven't recommended this to me. So I don't know well, why you guys are having uh, a secret. Stuart Turton, the author of that, actually has another audiobook. What? Uh, yes. It's called The Devil and the Dark Water. Uh, that is coming out in October. So there's another uh, Audible one for you to, to look forward to. Uh, just... Also, uh, let's see, Maureen Johnson's Truly Devious series is oh, the best. incredible. Can't recommend enough. Uh, I just listened to James Acaster's Classic Scrapes, uh, which is so Sounds funny. Good. It's so good. Sounds really uh, good. And listen, it... let's, let's all be honest. You got some free time, right? We all have a little bit more free time this year than we were expecting. So why not sign up for Audible? Go to stories.audible.com and you can check it out. Uh, you, you know, you can stream hundreds of ad-free, hand-picked Audible titles completely free, no strings attached. So go check it out by visiting audible.com slash brother or text brother to 500-500. That's audible.com slash brother and check it out. You won't regret it, I promise. I love you. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's a weird energy. Well, I guess we got to uh, say that after all our ads now, or else people are going to think we're assholes. Well, I, try, I mean, listen, go... I know I, it's the first time we've said it out loud in each other's presence, uh, yeah. let alone to each other. Uh, well, I thought but, you were talking about to the audience, too. To well, no, no, I am. Oh, let me be clear. That wasn't to you guys. Okay. Well, okay, let me take this for a spin. Raycon makes uh, very, very stylish premium uh, earbuds that have great sound, and Mm -hmm. uh, they got this new model, Raycon does, called the Everyday E25 Earbuds. I love you guys so much. Whoa. But these are their best earbuds yet. They got six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, a more compact design, uh, and a noise-isolating fit. And you guys are so special to me. And these are you earbuds talking to are, us or the audience? The earbuds are stylish and discreet. There's no dangling wires or unsightly stems. Just pure machine. Just you and the machine, baby. I love you. Give them a try, though. Wait. They, they have a 45-day free return policy, so you can make sure they're the pair of wireless earbuds for you, my special, my special little guy. And for a limited time, you can get 15% off your order. Isn't that great? If you go to buyraycon.com slash my brother, that's buyraycon.com slash my brother for a special 15% discount on Raycon wireless earbuds. Make sure to check it out now while the deal's running. Buyraycon.com slash my brother, my, my, my eternal flame. 
Riley Smurl. I'm Sydney McElroy. And I'm Taylor Smurl. And together, we host a podcast called Still Buffering, where we answer questions like, Why should I not fall asleep first at a slumber party? How do I be fleet? Is it okay to break up with someone using emojis? And sometimes we talk about bugs. No, we don't. Nope. <laughs> Find out the answers to these important questions and many more on Still Buffering, a sister's guide to teens through the ages. I am a teenager. And, and I was two. Butts, 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 butts. No. Will you change your mind? How about another question? Oh, Three, sure. Two, one. Sure. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Yesterday afternoon, my roommates and I had a tie dye party where I brought the dyes and we were going to do a bunch of shirts. Of course. At least I thought we were. <gasps> my roommates both only brought one shirt each Ugh. and then had fun dyeing some of my old t shirts as well. Looking at their shirts now before washing, I'm 100% certain that once I unwrap one, it's just going to be solid yellow because she used too much dye and I didn't notice. This is going to be so disappointing, especially since now I have five cool shirts to her one solid yellow shirt. What should I do? Oh, Try to fix it before giving it to her? Tell her now, almost 24 hours later, that I didn't notice she messed up? Throw it away and start a whole new shirt? Please help. I don't have much time before I have to give the shirts back. Holy shit. This is actually a surprisingly challenging question. Yeah. This is a tough one. That's from Tie Dying for an answer wow. in Chicago. There's, there's a lot of hair on this one. There's yep. a lot of there's a lot of uh, a lot of flies in the ointment. Oh, because they only got the one shirt. They took one crack at it. This you was could... a mistake. <sighs> you you don't show up to a tie dye party with one shirt because that's saying like, hey everybody, it's me, the world's best tie dyer. You right. Sit, sit back and watch me do my fucking thing. It is a cold shot. It is this one shirt is going to be better than your five. Yeah. End of it. Like I I wouldn't is, trust it myself. It is a competition. To do that. You are competing. Yeah. yeah. What are you gonna tie dye for the fun of it? No, you tie dye so that you have a good product at the end. Yeah, it's not that fun. <laughs> it's oh, okay. like it's maybe for a child. You know what I mean? For a child, it's fun, but mm. you really want the finished product. I went. Uh, uh, I my girls tie dyed a shirt uh, somewhere. I oh, got. I can't even forget. It's been years, but they were so excited. They tie dyed their shirts, and then they said, "Now you just leave it in this bag for twenty four hours." Are you fucking kidding me? You might as well have told my kids to throw this in an incinerator and forget it ever existed <laughs> for as long as that sounded. Tie dyeing isn't fun. Some people like it, Justin. A lot of it's I'm a, saying it's, it's, it's very it pleasurable as a craft, but as a layman, <laughs> it's not fun. Okay. Well, there are many things, Justin, I would argue that for some people are fun to do and for others are incredibly boring. Sure. This is obviously, do I have to codify everything I say on the show as this is just my perspective, but this is just my skewed humor. view. Right. Um, here's, here's uh, let's start doing options, okay? Number one, okay. you give her the yellow shirt and you say, congratulations, you made a shirt yellow. And yeah. you didn't do you didn't do what you were trying to do, but this shirt wasn't yellow before, and now uh -huh. it is. And isn't that empowering? You have accomplished something. You have you accomplished have something. Changed the nature of something. It's very nature. And if, if they're like a you know a bright summer, then it's gonna this is really gonna compliment them. You know yes. what I mean? I love a yellow. I look great in a yellow. It's my favorite color. If you told me, hey Griffin, you didn't uh, your your attempt to iron on you know this picture of the cast of Night Court on this shirt didn't go so well, but you yeah. did dye it straight yellow. You I'd be like, well, bull. <laughs> you smudged bull and made the shirt straight. <laughs> just a big stretched out. <laughs> just, he looks like a thumb because you smudged his face and now it's just a thumb. No, he takes it. He now takes it. Richard Mole takes up the entirety of the shirt, just his bloated, stretched out, ruined face. But, but uh, you, you nailed Larrakat. Larrakat's great. He's just on the back. Um, but no, if it's just yellow, then I'd be fine because it's still a good shirt. It's still a fine shirt. But if shirt. that wasn't your goal, Griffin, it's like if I set out to make chicken soup and I ended up with a fine gazpacho, like, I think I'd be disappointed and confused no matter how good this, the, the, the gazpacho was. You have to have, I think you can fix it because when they open it, one, they're going to be so delighted by this amazing thing. These circles of color, come on. They're gonna be loving it. But even if that moment passes, and it will, like all pleasure, I don't think they're going to have a moment where they say, 
wait a minute. Did they tie down my tie dye? Did <laughs> well, did he, unless, it's so inconceivable. No, I will not. I shan't. You have to I go. I can't grant you this. You have no. to go. It's in the contract. Unless, <sighs> unless, unless they didn't want a tie dyed shirt. They wanted a yellow shirt. Fuck. God damn it. I hate, I hate, the, 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 just once I like to find some fucking black and white in this world rather than living my existence in perpetual shades of gray. Yep. But Travis is right, of course. <laughs> That's entirely possible. They just wanted, they had a shirt that was one color. They wanted it to be yellow instead. That's entirely possible. That, that you said, we're going to tie dye him. They thought, I'm never going to wear a tie dye shirt. But, but, hey, free, but hey, free dye. But hey, free dye. I have been looking for an excuse to turn this shirt yellow. Um, hey, can I do a Yahoo? Yeah, I'd love that. We didn't this help one... that person at all. Not a bit. Nope. Not a lick. It's too hard. Can't do I it. Don't. Things are rough. <laughs> you finally hit something we can't help with. I, I think it's because we don't know anything about tie-dye. No. That's a problem. Don't, I don't know if you can tie-dye dye on top of tie-dye. Once the shirt is yellow, can you dye again? Um, so this- Can you dye it another day? Cool. Mm. This, uh, this Yahoo is sent in by the wizard, Emma Cant. What do you think about that? Ooh. Okay. I like that. Emma, thank you. It's an anonymous Yahoo answer. Why not a wizard? Why, Why not, not a wizard? wizard? Uh, this one's by Yahoo Answers User. They're anonymous, so I'm going to call them Preston Asks. Oh, like Prestidigitation. <laughs> what? Like Preston like Digitation uh, would be my oh, wizard. My name is Preston Digitation, <laughs> and cool. I'm here to change the world of wrestling. <laughs> I also flip real good. That's... Look at these flips. They are not magically enhanced. <laughs> They're physical flips. <laughs> and also lightning. That's hard. To, that's hard. If you practice really hard to do cool flips as the wizard wrestler, you have to keep reassuring people that, no, I trained yes. to do those. <laughs> Uh, Preston asks, if you could combine two sports to make a new sport, mm -hmm. which two would you pick and why? There's room right now for, for a new sport to take off. Uh, Football and, and jousting. Yeah. Football and jousting is Travis did not even think about it before he went for football and jousting, which is kind of like polo. Sort of. Walk me through it, Trav. What's it look like? Well, it's uh, you have the big linemen, but they also okay. have big pointy sticks. Does yeah. anybody else have pig? Are they on horseback? Uh, no. the The wide receivers and the running backs are sitting on the linemen's shoulders. Oh, so they're playing like chicken, sticks. like at a pool. But they have, but they, they have, have big sticks, okay. big pointy sticks. Also, gonna... what about water polo and regular polo? That's cool. <laughs> now there's horses in the pool. Yeah. Forever. And don't get me wrong, the pool is shallower. The horses can touch the bottom. Oh, this is so not, just... the horses aren't swimming. So, but, but yeah, you basically created the most dangerous sport for if you do fall off the horse. Oh, yeah. And yeah. get trampled underwater. That's a Dunsky right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a season wrap. Um, let's think, let's think about this because I think, I think there's some sports that could serve as like a really exciting modifier for virtually every other sport. Yeah. Like I think if we took NASCAR uh -huh. and blended it with literally anything else. Jousting. That's rough. I'm trying to think of the safety of the athletes, Trav, and I guess I'm alone in that. Okay, well then soccer, but with car. No, that's a game, isn't it? It's a game, yeah, I think so. Um... Yeah, you I mean, know what? I, I I'm gonna say okay. Picture this. Okay. NASCAR. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And they're going real fast. Uh huh. But in order to win, you have to hit a ramp, pass by a basketball net, and slam dunk it out of dunk the car it. window. That's cool. Ooh. See, now we're talking. Yeah. Right. Um, I think NASCAR and just can can I just say the X Games? Huh. I it's would really love to see a snowboarding car like replace. The wheels, I guess, with like rails, with like skis. Yeah. yeah. And now they're doing a big jump. I like That's the big cool. jumps. Uh, I mean, boxing in any other sport is like now they, but they fight. It's like baseball, but they fight. Well, they already fight in baseball sometimes, but they're not supposed to. But, but you I can do win. Like, yeah. You, could, you play baseball and you're doing great, but you know, say the Angels are down, you know, nine zip, bottom of the ninth, and they're like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Let's just fucking get these guys. And so yeah. you go over there and you just start punching the other people in the dugout until the ump is like, game, angels, come from behind, oh. victory. Okay. Here's my pitch. Here's my okay. pitch. This is okay. my pitch. Okay. 
combine every sport yeah. individually, not like into one big mass. I'm saying like this, like with capture the flag, where mm. you're playing baseball, but also in each dugout, right? There's a flag. Oh and if, my God. if the other team is distracted and you can get over there and get it. Same with like football. There's a flag on the sidelines. Soccer, there's a flag in the side. Like <gasps> there's just a flag. And, but if you can get their flag back over to your side while sure. they're busy playing the game, you win. It's got to be baseball, right? Because I'm thinking about it now. The, every other like of the major sports has had the sexier version made of it. We got slam ball for basketball. We got XFL for NFL, but baseball, I'm not even thinking of it like NASCAR can modify everything better. I'm thinking about baseball needs of that sauce. What's it need? Yeah. What it needs a little bit of that sauce. And I think I think having some other sort of excitement on top okay. of baseball is the secret. I got a good one. Okay. Shot put and curling. Ooh. Sorry. No, wait. Yes. No. Yes. I got it. Discus and curling. So you're doing your curling, right? And you're scooting the thing down the pipe. And then at any moment, someone could come and <laughs> scoop up your your uh, uh, your disc and hurl it as far as they can. And then your sport has stopped and their sport has begun. So you have to get it over across before someone can storm out of the darkness and take your disc and throw it as far as they can. Okay. That's neat. That's okay. a neat idea. In fact, shot put plus anything is very good. That is true. Like you could be playing football and you're like holding the ball, but ooh, you better pass it quick or else someone's going to, a strong person's going to run out of the shadows and grab it as far I, as they can. And it won't be in a way you like. I am pretty <laughs> sure American football is soccer plus shot put, right? Yeah, I'm pretty like, sure I'm they kick, I'm going to kick the ball. No way, that guy grabbed it and threw it. <laughs> There's always just big fellas trying to take the ball away from you. That's sort of like inherent. That's like important. An important facet of the sport. What I got about? A, I got a great one. Okay. What about cross country skiing? Uh huh. And rifle shooting. Oh, is this the most dangerous game kind of thing? No, you wouldn't be shooting at each other. You would like, oh, cross country okay. ski for a while, and you know, go for a long time, and so you're kind of racing like that. But then you get to like a target range where you, then you have to shoot a bunch of targets with your rifle. And then you set it down and you just keep on skiing, baby. <laughs> okay, so, uh-huh. What's, how does this, what's the addition here? What do you mean? Like, how is this improving both sports? Um, Because, you, Scott, you're watching people cross-country ski. Uh-huh. And then you're like, this is getting boring. Whoa, what are they doing? And then they get out a rifle and they're like, bah, 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 bah. Now, there is downhill skiing with lasers, right? I'm doing a joke, you it's fucking a joke. guys. I'm okay. doing a joke it's because it's the, called the biathlon. It's called the biathlon, thing, you fucking thing guys. But you weren't even. Sometimes I do fucking. Sometimes I do a fucking joke on this show, and it like doesn't work because you guys don't get it. Jokes interesting. Jokes and interesting. It makes me pretty pissed. It makes me pretty pissed off from being dun, 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 dun. Oh no! Wait, I've got it. Wait, before we go on, baseball and ballroom dancing. You, uh, catch, that, that, you catch the ball and then you have to do a little dance and you get judged on it. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> and you hit the ball and you have to do a little dance before you can run. Or you do the dance while you're running. And you got a samba to the first base. You got a rumba to second base. Tango to third. I want a munch. Squad. I want to munch. Squad. Welcome to Munch Squad. It's a podcast within a podcast about the latest and greatest of brain eating. I'm gonna. Did you say start brain tr- eating? Brand eating. I'm trying to do more headlines. Yeah. Uh, right now, because uh, there's not as many deep dives, but there are some things that I do want to pass on. Okay. To you, Wiener Schnitzel oh. is a chain. Okay, so right with that mouth. Wiener Schnitzel announces lineup for new cheesy ooze fest. Oh, oh fuck, Wiener Schnitzel. Oh, Steal yourself. Uh, ooze fest has arrived at Wiener Schnitzel, oh, God. and it's going to be epic. Experience unsurpassed deliciousness with the chain's new cheese sauce Ugh. taking the spotlight of three fan favorites. It later said, it says in the the quote, and this is from the CMO of Wiener Schnitzel, Doug K- Uh We're confident our Ooze Fest event will be a big hit. If you like cheese, you're going to love these. After one bite, you'll be requesting an encore. Oh, God. 
I assume after this, he said, are any of those anything? <laughs> I have other things to do. And the, the press release says, no need to trek to a desert to experience these amazing headliners. That possibility had not occurred to me, Why? Wiener Schnitzel. Wait, but why I would I go that? there, Wiener Schnitzel? Because this tasty trio will be touring your nearest Wiener Schnitzel, but, but for a limited time only. Where did the doing, desert like, the come man from? Thing? What? I guess it's a Burning Man thing. What's the desert? That's the, that's the festival that Wiener Schnitzel hey, has heard about. Hey, Justin, is it is it E W W S? Ooze. Oh, f- fucking got him. This is a very brief one because it's just a sad story. But I do. This is in the general actual news category. No, uh, Taco Bell was not done with their absolutely like slash and burn no. crusade against me. their own shit. Their scorched the, earth policy? <laughs> yeah, the final <laughs> uh, revamp of 2020. We're just doing empty shells. No, they're getting rid of... <sighs> they're getting rid of Mexican pizza. No! One of the more authentic dishes... <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, at Taco Bell, they're getting rid of uh, Mexican pizza. They're getting rid of pico de gallo, what? and they're getting rid of shredded chicken. Now, if wow. you say you want chicken, you won't be able to specify that you want that shit shredded. Uh, you're gonna just only have one style of chicken. Huh? Wow. Removing um, this is actually gonna trip you out pretty bad. <laughs> Taco Bell said removing. Uh, Mexican pizza will help it leave a lighter footprint since the Mexican pizza's packaging accounts for more than 7 million pounds of paperboard material per year in the U.S. Oh, Are you what? fucking with shit? Right what? Now? We're crazy for this pizza. What? I want to see a graph now, with this, which is like human waste of all year and then one sliver of it is like a not inconsiderable portion is mexican pizza packaging wow so that's mind-blowing and our last story rest in peace shredded chicken our last story comes to us from the hershey company the reese's brand the reese's brand is here to save your morning with the new reese's snack cakes a first of its kind huh. mid-morning cake treat by the Reese's brand you love. You read that right. A Reese's treat to enjoy in the morning, but forever. (laughs) That's what it says. It says forever? Yep, you read that right. A Reese's treat to enjoy in the morning, forever. (laughs) Does that just mean like, this is not a limited time thing, friends? This is called shot. forever. What is a research, morning cake? Research shows 83% say they have indulged in dessert before noon in the past month. Hey, Reese's, can you think of any other fucking reason that might be? <laughs> you absolute. The colonel is like, no, 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 careful. No, no, no. It's the COVID thing. I know I ignored it for six months too before I changed finger looking good. It's the COVID thing. You're wandering right into it. <clears throat> so we had a crazy idea. Oh? Give Reese's fans permission to have cake as a mid-morning snack whenever they want. So Reese's sees us at the bottom of the well in the, the a deep global depression. Uh-huh. And rather than extend a head and down to us to help us swim out, it just starts dumping peanut butter and cake onto us. Right. Like, here, we'll help you. This is helping... I'm helping. Here's a shovel. Dig down. Dig down. There's got to be something better. With Reese's Snack Cakes, Reese's fans can enjoy a delicious combination of chocolate and peanut butter cream without having to wait until lunch. We wanted to create the perfect treat for Reese's fans to satisfy that mid-morning sweet tooth, said Mike Orr, Snacks brand manager. We know sometimes you just don't want to wait until lunch. That's how Reese's Snack Cakes were born. (laughs) It's like the Reese's brand first ever mid-morning treat offers real milk chocolate and Reese's peanut butter cream in a two-cake pack available December 2020 at convenience stores nationwide. Now you can... now you can indulge in a Reese's treat any time of day. What? Consider morning officially saved. Hashtag not sorry. Okay. First of all, yeah, that put it it's over. a lot. That was over the top. It, the hashtag 
was over it's the a top. lot what was stopping me from eating a reese's cup in the morning that's fucking clearly nothing because according to your own fucking research 83 percent of us are enjoying a little mid-morning so yeah <laughs> so why is now making it a little breadier make it okay for me to do yeah, and y'all, like, listen, you're not looking at these cakes. They're cakes. You're not making, this is not like a fucking biscotti. It's like a, a layer of cake wrapped in chocolate with Reese's on it. It's a, it's a dessert. And you're just saying that you can eat it at 10 o'clock in the morning. That doesn't do anything. We give you permission. I Oh, I didn't, I clearly didn't need it when 83% of me was already doing it. Do you think that 17% was waiting on cake? <laughs> <laughs> You're just waiting for it. I'd love to eat a Reese's right now, but 17% of us say it's no good. Maybe those 17% will be swayed by cake. Possibly. Perhaps if cake. Ugh. Um, That's why I do want it, though. I want I, it. I want to eat. I'm so hungry looking at it. You have no idea I would do anything to eat this cake I'm going right to time now. travel to December 2020 when it's done so I can but eat it. you know it. what? It's 139. And maybe the vaccine, too. You don't know. Yeah. We might be having celebratory Reese's snack cakes. With a delicious All right, Justin, vaccine. you can only have one. December twenty twenty. What do you pick? Oh, oh the cake. The cake. For okay, because sure. the cake love, might I... fix the cake. We we don't know the cake won't fix. Yeah, yeah, that's true. The cake. The cake definitely isn't a hoax. Yeah, let's just leave it at that. Jeez. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> oh golly. I will also wait until Reese's gives me permission to get a vaccine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but eighty three percent of you are, are getting mid morning vaccines. <laughs> Can I, I'm just I, waiting for the Reese's scientist to determine that it's safe. Just so you know, just in the future, if you do bring Wiener Schnitzel into the Munch Squad, I am gonna go because I did. Now I've, I was in my hole for a while. Whenever anybody brings up Wiener Schnitzel, I climb into my hole uh, that is, exists in my fucking mind palace. Uh, is a rage hole because Wiener Schnitzel is a hot dog restaurant, and Wiener Schnitzel. Is not hot. Is not a hot dog. It is a breaded veal cutlet. And the guy that started Wiener Schnitzel was like, "I need a name for my hot dog place." And then he was looking in one of his wife's recipe books and saw Wiener Schnitzel in there. He's like, "That's that's a great name got for my hot dog right there, doesn't it? It's got Wiener right there in it." And his, I hope his wife was like, "Oh, John, stop! Look at the picture, John." I wish John you were a more attentive reader and lover. He said when he started the restaurant, quote, nobody wanted to call their uh, company Wiener Schnitzel. Three days later, I said, hell, it's better than John's hot dogs. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. And you know why, John? Because John's hot dogs has hot dogs in it. And I'm pretty sure Nathan's Famous Hot Dogs is a very popular brand. Yep. It's not Nathan's Famous Sushi that sells hot dogs. They got the name right. It has the right food in it. Anyway. Apparently, they um, sold Wiener Schnitzel for a few months in 2017. I assume that was just to get me off their case. Did it work? Nope. He could see right through it. Hey, guys, be quiet for 30 seconds. Can you do that? Sure. sure. Here you go. Double cheese fries, double cheese chili fries, and a double cheese chili dog. Enjoy. Wow. Everyone seems to love our Ooze Fest event. Yeah, we are actually running low on cheese sauce. Weird. I just made a bunch. I'll go check it out. Oh, that explains it. Cool. At this point, I should just pause real quick to say that there's a, a person in a giant hot dog suit, and they've got a jacuzzi tub filled with cheese sauce, and they're ladling more into it. Okay. And they're about to climb into it, and they're wearing a towel because they're about to get into the cheese I'm sauce. I'm glad you broke that down for us because I was confused. Floaties. Oh, God. The towel has dropped from the hot dog while this young man looks on. Dive into all the new cheesy goodness during Ooze Fest at Wiener Schnitzel. So do they reference the hot dog's genitals? Do they say, so does, does the dude Wouldn't like- Wouldn't it be amazing if it had another smaller hot dog? I mean, that's what it has to be, Justin. Has to be, has and to be. Thank you for listening. The employee pushes his sunglasses down the bridge of his nose like, oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you for listening to my brother. You don't work there if you don't find hot dogs sexy. Right? Thanks for listening to. <laughs> I I would Sorry, actually it's... think you 
can't work there without later fine. Like you just handle them so much. Yeah. It's going to creep its way let, into your brain. Let this, in, let this end. This has been my brother, my brother made to my show for the modern era. Thank you so much for listening. We so appreciate you being here. Um, we uh, It's new month, which means there's some new merchandise in our store. Including um, those McElroy. B pins. We got hilarious B pins. Oh, are those out? Com. Fuck yeah. those again. Yeah. So funny. Um, uh, and, uh, so go check that out. And also you can pre-order our book. Yeah. It's, uh, it's there for sale. Uh, it's, it's at Amazon or you can go to McElroy podcast book.com and pre-order it there. It is a practical how to guide on how to make a podcast that you are proud of. Everybody has a podcast except you written by the three of us. It comes out in January. Pre-order it now. McElroy podcast book.com. It's also kind of fun. You'll like it. It's probably got jokes in it and games for the kids. Don't no. have games. No. Uh, thanks to John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of our uh, theme song. It's a, it's a departure off the album Putting the Days to Bed. Uh, and thank you to Maximum Fun for having us on the network. Go to MaximumFun.org. Check out all the great shows there. Shows like Jordan, Jesse, Go. Shows like Switchblade Sisters and so many more at MaximumFun.org. Um, I think that's it. Oh, and check out the besties if you haven't. It's mine and Justin's it's video games good. podcast uh, that we do with our buds, Russ and Chris. You can find it on Spotify for free. Uh, check it out. The last episode we did was on a bunch of games, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, you want the final? Oh yeah, this final one was sent in by the wizard Emma Can't. Thank you, Emma. It's uh, Yahoo Answers user Brian, whose fucking profile picture is a very intimidating close up of Santa Claus. Ooh. Like he's got this. He actually has. He actually has his little Santa Claus spectacles pushed down the bridge of his nose, as if he's saying, "Like, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, I love that hot dog's wiener." Uh, so Brian asks, "Can I order a Subway sandwich deconstructed?" <laughs> My name is Justin. I'm <laughs> Travis. Man, we talk oh, about hey. Subway a lot, don't we? They do salads. This has been my brother. My brother made that's Griffin. Kiss your dad. Score on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported.